What is up, YouTube? Today we're going to be trying something just a little different. I got this Hewlett Packard NV700 series, aka HP NV700. If you didn't know, HP stands for Hewlett Packard uh, Company. Uh, anyway, besides the point, it's a fun fact. I think it's pretty interesting. And I was thinking of just building a brand new computer, but my uncle hit me up and he was like, we're getting rid of old desktop systems. So I said, okay, this might be a cool project to put parts in for an old system. So I went to the company that my uncle was working with and I picked it up. He said, when I got there, there's no hard drive, there's no RAM. So I figured why not upgrade it to a gaming PC. Now, this specific model is a NV700-214. That's the model. It's factoried at a 4th gen Intel Core i5-4440 CPU. I'm going to explain what all this really is in layman's terms later, but I'm going to get into the motherboard, which is a Pegaton H87 Memphis B UATX motherboard. They're very easy to work with, just unscrew the thing and you can get inside the PC. Most of them are really easy just to take off. Some others not, like older ones, no. Getting back on topic, as I mentioned earlier, the motherboard is a UATX, which is the form factor. And if you're a beginner at PC and you're wanting to build one for yourself, it's important to know motherboard form factors because the form factor is the size of the motherboard. It basically tells you what case it goes in. Now, there's different cases for different motherboards and different motherboards, motherboards being UATX, MATX, ITX for your mini cases, and different things like that. Your ATX is your usually your ultra or your mid towers, while your ITX is your minis, and it, it's just a matter of no, knowing what size motherboard you need for your case. As you can see here, my uncle and me changed out the power supply because the GPU I want to put in it does not support a 300 watt power supply as the standard and what the standard came for this is basically a 300 watt HP power supply. So I went with the EVGA 80 plus gold gen 5 850 watt from, from my old computer it would be well enough to support all the stuff going to be put in it. It's as simple as just connecting all these connections they're usually labeled in motherboards like the cpu is usually next to the cpu the sata is your hard drives the motherboard is that big connect enough rambling but i plan to have two dvd drives in that and the reason for that and the benefit of that is to not only run physical copies of older games but watch movies as well i'm gonna get a blu-ray drive that's pretty cool i mean can't do that with, I mean, you can do that with consoles, but you can't really do that with PCs nowadays. Unless you buy an external disk drive. That is a thing, but it's through USB. From the factory, it comes with one DVD drive, six gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, two six gigabyte cards each, to be specific. No dedicated GPU, obviously, it's the CPU integrated Intel HD Graphics Force 4600. And the network card, it does offer Wi Fi, integrated Bluetooth 4.0, and regular single band Wi Fi 2.4 gigahertz. It has an Ethernet base of 1 gigahertz, as most motherboards have. And standard factory, it comes with a 2 terabyte. Set a hard drive at 7200 RPMs. The power supply we already covered. For the system memory, I decided to go for an MSATA solid state drive. This is a little bit different from your M.2 drives. Your regular M.2 drives in your modern system are more longer and their form factor are rated at 2280. This one's rated at 525. So it's more squared, and it's a different type of SSD, but it works the same. Layman's terms, works the same. It's a one terabyte dogfish SSD. 
always make sure the notches line up. This is very hard to do. If you look closely, you only really need one screw because there's no offset on the other, it seems. Or no screw hole. There's no screw hole. It looks like there's no screw hole on the other end, so... I guess one screw will hold it in. I'm not really too sure. It only came with one screw, so... For the RAM, I decided to go with the G-Skills Ripjaw X. This is gaming memory. It's at a 1600 MT speeds. And it's about 8 gigs each, so it supports XMP, which is gaming performance. In total, this is 16 gigabytes in total. As you can see here, they're really easy to install. Just push on until it clicks the side pieces in, and then you got RAM. When in doubt, use P other PC parts as an advantage. So, I didn't have a screwdriver to actually properly take this off, but I need this off in order to be able to put the GPU in. Unlike custom cases, this does not have thumb screws. For the GPU, I'm going to be putting my old GPU, the 66XT, into this one. And this used to be in this one. If you've been with the channel, you'll know that I've upgraded that one to a 79. 100 XTX. So, this was laying around. Might as well put it in the computer. I mean, they have the screws, but that's annoying. It's more industrial. Oh, and by the way, AK, these are, if you don't know, I had to figure this out. You pry these off. So once you remove them, like this one, you can't really, unless you buy like a holder or whatever, you, there's no uh, there's no way to get that, that sealed. They look like this. This is the one I had to break out. No screws, just a breakout piece. See, the difference is you can like take those out. Unlike custom builds, it's really nice. You know, traditional ones, they didn't have it like that. Ta da The cables are just too long, too. The only they make you put this thing because there's no that's the only way to keep it in. It's so stupid. This used to be a Windows 8 machine. Y'all good. Okay, temporarily I got that set up, so let's try to see if it works now. No. Something's grinding. So I'm having a little bit of issues with this computer. Um, at first the picture wouldn't come on at all. I managed fixing that issue, but it's still blue screening crashing. I'm thinking it's because the GPU is too new for the motherboard and I can't really install a BIOS update. I'm going to explain. This GPU is made in 2021. The motherboard is made in 2014 by HP. I fooled around with the BIOS. I tried downloading a BIOS update. There's no way to get the BIOS from HP unless you download a software that's only supported on Windows 7 and 8.1. It's not supported on Windows 10. Now, usually you would just get a driver download, put it on a USB, then flash it on a motherboard. This HP doesn't do that. 
they make you download a software that installs it. I looked up tutorials, everything. There's no way to update the BIOS unless you were on Windows 7 or 8.1. And it's like they don't even let you manually update it through the BIOS itself. HP locks their BIOS down. I don't know why. I guess it's to prevent more human error or something. But earlier, I tried to take the GPU out and just run it through that blue VGA thing that's going directly to the motherboard. It's a old school plug for a standard monitor like this that wasn't really full HD. And it didn't give me a problem at all. Nothing was crashing, nothing was blue screening. If I connect it to the GPU right now like it is, eventually it'll either freeze or blue screen. So I don't want to deal with just a under HD resolution. So my goal here is to turn this into an ultra HD gaming PC with DDR3 technology. Yes, it's kind of behind we're in ddr5 but for the price of what little you have to do to transform a normal pc into a gaming pc is kind of worth it even if it's ddr3 because you can still run at 60 fps on an ultra hd setting so the plan for this to fix this issue and not have to run off motherboard graphics or intel cpu graphics like normal pcs usually do that are just workstations i'm going to change out the motherboard to where I can update the BIOS and the GPU can be supported. I'm just going to swap everything out and it's going to be same in the same case. Technically, it's not going to be HP anymore because the motherboard has been swapped. But uh, far from that, it should be the same concept, should be almost the same specs. It might have four DIMMs of RAM instead of two, but depends on what motherboard I get. I'm going to try to get the similar specs as this one just to get a good idea of what this system should have ran if I got it installed and working properly because that was what the test was supposed to be. What an ordinary computer can run if you put a GPU in it. I was very curious, but if you are curious of how this system can run and what you can push out of a normal PC with a fitted GPU, and if you like PC building videos, follow me and subscribe. Give this video a like. I also do gaming reviews and technology reviews. So if you're interested, give this channel a follow. And don't forget to slap that like button. See you in the next video.